Welcome to a model steam engine test plant. This is part 24. The boiler plant is complete and in this video I need to test it. For this job I'm using a Stuart number no. 9 steam engine and the results were not quite as expected. The first thing to do is to oil up the engine. There are several oiling points on this engine and all of them are quite difficult to use. On the caps there are no knurls so they're very slippery and they don't locate very well in the holes. They are quite tricky to use but they look good. Thankfully the eccentrics don't use these oil cups, these were very easy to oil. I'm fitting a piece of silicone rubber tubing to the water gauge blowdown. This in turn is fed into the bottom water tank. This is a good idea because when I blow down the water gauge, the water doesn't go onto the baseboard, it goes into the tank. This will of course heat up the water supply in the lower tank, but in the upper tank it needs to be cold water. Generally live steam injectors do not like working with a water feed that is hot. Time to light the gas burners. I'm using a small blowtorch in the top of the chimney. I think it's going to take a lot of time to raise steam with this much water in the boiler. Here I'm testing the temperature of the boiler and despite having two gas burners it really is not very hot. After a while though I got some steam with no pressure showing on the pressure gauge whatsoever. It was a long shot to test the injector with no pressure and of course it didn't work. The steam just blew out of the injector's overflow. These twin ceramic burners don't seem to provide much heat. But after a while, finally, there is some steam. Not enough to run the engine, but enough to warm it up. The Stuart number no. 9 has a 2 inch bore cylinder which is quite large. But then again, so is the boiler at 6 inches in diameter, like my Castle steam boiler. But there the comparison ends. If I can sort out the fire and get a bit more heat by trying different gas supplies, different jet sizes, which I'll do in a future episode, and then when I find the solution, all will be well, hopefully. I only want to use this boiler to test engines, and here, with only £25 per square inch on the clock, it's proving to be quite useful. Clearly, the gland is blowing and needs either repacking or at least adjusting. First of all though, I thought I would try adjusting the gland and tightening it slightly using a spanner. By now there was enough pressure to run the engine. I can see also there are some steam leaks around the steam tap on the engine. I stopped the engine after a while to allow the steam to build up. And here on the pressure gauge the needle is going up very slowly. All is well with this excellent microcosm see-through displacement lubricator which shows very clearly that it's working properly. Now there's 50 psi showing on the pressure gauge, so it's time to test the injector. This is a number 4 injector that I fitted, but it's a very old one. I used to have it on my Titch locomotive, and it was never very reliable, and that was 30 years ago. And it does work, but it's very dribbly. I open the water valve, followed by the steam valve, and it does pump some water into the boiler because the pressure very quickly dropped to 25 psi, then it knocked off. It actually pumped water into the boiler too quickly because the number 4 injector is a bit on the big side for this boiler. This engine takes quite a long time to warm up because of the size of the cylinder, but eventually the condensate clears and it starts to go. I'm not using the drain cocks because I don't want oily water all over the bench and the baseboard. I'll stop talking and let you have a listen. Unfortunately though, this boiler can't provide enough steam to run this engine. It's not just the lack of heat, the piping is far too small a bore. But as I said before, I only want this as a test plant, so it's unimportant. I turned off the gas and disconnected the engine from the steam plant and connected an airline to it. Here I'm draining the condenser by opening the tap on the top of the condenser. After blowing away the water, I injected some steam oil into the line, reconnected it and now steam oil has been pumped into the steam chest and into the cylinder and out of the exhaust. This is absolutely essential with a cast iron engine. If you don't do this, the next time you come to run it, it's likely to be seized solid. The final job is to refill the boiler, but not using the hand pump. 
The hand pump is a very low capacity and it takes ages. With all the valves on the boiler closed, after pumping some cold water into the boiler, the steam is all gone and a vacuum occurs. I don't know what's making the sound of an old analog modem, that's very odd. The main thing is the boiler is filling itself with water using the vacuum inside. There was just enough water in the lower tank to fill the boiler to about half full, which will be fine for the next run. As usual, I'm going to experiment with different methods of firing this boiler, starting by fitting a couple of number 8 gas jets, which I really do not think is the answer, but I'll try it in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.